Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are going to just wait a few minutes, let all of our audience come and join us. We're so happy to have you here at the Ask Me Anything webinar. Thank you for joining us today. Okay. Well, it looks like we are ready to go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ask Me Anything summer webinar series where we hope to answer your questions about what it looks like to attend Biola. My name is Kayla Zuniga, and I am the Director of Undergraduate Admissions here at Biola University, and I'm so excited to see how many have joined us today and how many have joined us for all of the series episodes that we've done so far. Um, this is the third of four opportunities to ask questions to a variety of offices across our campus. And today's episode will include health center and campus safety. Um, so we have two amazing participants here today to talk about their individual area. But before we do just a, some quick House rules, we ask that all of your questions are really focused and are relevant to the individuals that are present here today. So the be the health center and our campus safety program. Um, we'll have an opportunity to hear from both of them today and then other departments in the weeks to come. But we do have some pre-submitted questions that we've received over the last couple of weeks that we'll be first answering. And then as questions come up, as you're listening to our speakers speak, feel free to use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen and the Q&A feature to send in your questions that we hope to answer in um, the time that we have here today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let our guests introduce themselves. So we have uh, Chief O with us here today. So I'll go ahead and let him introduce himself and um, what he does here at Biola. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And perhaps I should say good morning if there's anyone joining us from Hawaii, uh, because it's still, I think, you know, two to three hours, uh, you know, behind. Um, as introduced, you know, John, I just cover, uh, but uh, students call me Chief O. Um, you know, for some reason, you know, I mean, you know, Kayla, I was thinking, Maybe they call me Chief O because they can't really say my last name. Or maybe Chief O is just, you know, a nickname. But either ways, I'll take that, though. Um, so I've been uh, on Biola's campus, you know, for um, 30, almost 30 years now. Uh, about, say, four and a half, five as a student. So I went to school here as a student. Um, and I've served as an employee here for the past uh, 25 years. You know, years. As a matter of fact, August first will make it twenty five years. You know, here, and of those twenty five, you know, years on uh, our campus. You know, here I have served as the chief of uh, you know campus safety uh, department. Um, aside from serving as uh, chief, you know, here on campus, I also serve as an adjunct faculty member uh, here in the teaching the one unit. Uh, sub defense class you know for women I've done that you know for the past you know 20 or so years um in uh I just I used to say in the weekends I put on my other uniform as, as a police officer but uh, uh this last April um with with our kids you know growing up and uh having so much activity sporting activity around the country I had to retire. Uh, as a police officer from the city of Garden Grove after almost uh, you know, 20 years. Uh, so it's been great, uh, you know, being here at Biola. I love Biola, you know, with all my heart and uh, happy to serve alongside uh, colleagues like Kayla, Sophia, and so many others on our campus. Um, in regards, you know, to uh, campus safety, you know, we concentrate mostly on uh, crime and safety on a campus, you know, to make sure the, the, the campus is safe. Uh, we patrol a campus. Uh, we have a 24 seven uh, communication center, which is equivalent to like a 911 you know, center. Um, we uh, are responsible for emergency preparedness 
on the campus to make sure that we're prepared if we were to have a major earthquake on campus. Uh, God forbid, if there's a threatening situation uh, that could impact students here, uh, employees as well, and guests, uh, that we stand ready to be able to respond you know, to those, you know, to keep uh, folks you know, safe. Along the same lines, uh, our students um, go overseas you know, for either uh, short-term missions or study abroad or study tours. Um, within uh, our department here, we have the Office of uh, Travel Safety and Risk Mitigation. Uh, we conduct assessments on location students you know, intend to travel to. Not only do we conduct those assessments, you know, we also um, you know, uh, put measures in place to, to address issues that may come up. Uh, the third aspect you know, that I wanted to mention has to do with support services. We provide a lot of support services to our students here on campus. Um, the bottom line here is this is, um, for us, it's not good enough to state that we keep our campus safe. We want to make a student feel safe. Those are two different things in you know, itself. So in a nutshell, that's what our department is about. Um, I'm very much looking forward you know, to meeting you all in person when you come on campus uh, just in a, in a few weeks from now. Thank you so much, Chifo. Um, yes, there, there are very two different things. It's making our campus safe and it's making a student feel safe. And I think those things um, you and your team do so well. So I can't wait for you to unpack what that looks like for, for Biola, but we'll go ahead and transition to Sophia Kim. Um, Sophia, could you please introduce yourself and what you are a part of? Sure. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for this time, Kayla. Um, I'm excited to be welcoming another class uh, this year. So my name is Sophia. I am the interim director of the Student Health Center um, here at Biola, and we are located right in the center of campus, right next to the library. Um, I actually started off at Biola as a grad student um, in Talbot in 2017, and then have been working since around that time as well. So I've been here for about six years. Um, and an interim director role for about a year now. Uh, my background is also a family nurse practitioner, and I'm also a psychiatric nurse practitioner. So my role on top of helping to manage the student health center is to also care for the students and see the students for everything from like colds and ankle sprains to um, psych and mental health needs. I work very closely with our psychiatrist here um, that we have. Um, yeah, and I guess, you know, as a student health center, our main goal and primary purpose is to really care and give excellent service for our students, um, particularly for all kinds of things that come up, whether it's colds or a weird rash, or maybe they have a question about asthma or even filling um, prescriptions that they need from their primary care doctor. And so we offer a variety of different care and services, not just for um medical services, but also for nurses, vaccines, all those kinds of things. So we are super excited to be welcoming the next batch of students uh, in the fall 2024. Thank you, Sophia. So we will go ahead and jump into our pre-submitted questions from families who were hoping to attend today. Um, and I think we'll start with you, Sophia. You alluded to a lot of this already, but one of the first questions that was sent in was what services does the health center provide for the students here at Biola? Yeah, so yeah, just as I alluded, um, people always ask like, what what kind of like health center is the health center? And I just kind of cram it all into, we are urgent care, we're primary care, we're also a travel consult center. We kind of do a little bit of everything. So we do have a internal medicine doctor and a family practice doctor who work here and who see patients for a variety of different things from just, as I said, urgent care things like coughs and colds and rashes to primary care things a little bit more with diabetes management, high blood pressure, those kinds of things. Um, we also have a psychiatrist who is telehealth and works for us part-time. So we do manage quite a few caseloads of psychiatric and mental health care and managing medication management for psychiatric patients as well. We also provide care for um, blood draws, um, travel consults. We work very closely with the campus safety team so that when we have a student who's going abroad or going on a short term missions trip, um, we do a travel consult uh, with our team and with their team to see if the student is cleared and, and safe to travel to whatever country that they're going to. 
Um, and then we also provide um, a, one of our most popular things here, um, actually called the self-help wall. And that is in our lobby in the Student Health Center, but it's this big wall with about 30 plus different um, supplies that students can access for free which is like Tylenol, ibuprofen, um, Claritin, all the way up to Band-Aids, Bacitracin. And so that's, I think, one of our most popular little stations here. Um, but students have access to that um, throughout the day when we are opened. And that's completely free. And um, students really utilize that as well. Um, and then the other thing we also do provide, we do have a small um, medication dispensary. So for students who don't have access or are unable to get to a pharmacy, we do have some medications available at cost. That has been really helpful for students. So they know that, oh, I can get my antibiotic here. I don't have to go, you know, walk or drive or find a ride to a pharmacy. So those are a few things that we, um, and, you know, we're always adding things here and there as things come up. Thank you so much. I can attest to that care wall. I, I utilize that often, even as a staff member here at Viola. So thank you, Health Center, for that. I'll, I'll say that the next question kind of falls in line with what you were just talking, Sophia. So I, I'm hoping to ask this one is, what would be considered within the Health Center's purview versus what is something that um, the students should maybe see or get taken care of outside of the Health Center and, and transition to maybe a hospital nearby? Yeah. Um... I guess as it would always be case by case, we take we take care of actually a variety of different things and actually have managed complex cases here too, whether it's um diabetes care, um, uh, whether it's bronchitis or even pneumonia, um, those kinds of things. I think once we start noticing that someone's maybe decompensating or someone is getting worse and not getting better, then we would obviously in that moment refer them to an urgent care or an emergency room. Um, and oftentimes we also will refer students to specialists because maybe we've hit the 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 we hit the wall and a, a rash or maybe they keep getting reoccurring ear infections and we are unable to maybe see why they're do, why they're con continuing to get an ear infection so those kinds of things where it's a little bit out of the the family practice or the internal medicine we kind of done all we can uh, we will then refer that student to a specialist outside of Biola and there are plenty of um, specialists that we do refer students to. We actually have a whole book um, of people that we refer to and we'll, rec we'll recommend those students to go to. And then we and then we would continue to follow up care for that student. So it's a two, twofold question, I guess. But yeah, depending on the specialty. And then, of course, if there's an emergency situation, um, we would manage that and have them go see an urgent care or ER. That's super helpful. I know that when I was a student here, I don't think I had any idea how much the health center did for the students. So even hearing that here today, I think it's important for those who are are listening in that you you guys do so much and you you can take care of so much for the students that it doesn't always require them to go out to other hospitals, that there's care here that can be provided for them. Thank you so much. Now we'll transition over to Chief O. Uh, one of the first questions that we've received about campus safety was just wanting to have a general idea of what emergency response preparation looks like for Biola. And then in addition to that, if the parents will be notified when emergency situation does happen on campus. Uh, yeah, um, on, on our campus, we have what well, we refer to the to as the emergency management team. And within our emergency management team, we have the emergency response team. Those are folks you know, who will respond to a situation in the front lines and manage them. Um, the second level is emergency building coordinators. The emergency building coordinators are inside uh, each building on campus. Uh, depending on the size of the building, you may have more than two, three, in some cases, seven emergency building coordinators. Uh, and their role is if there were to be a major emergency, such as an earthquake, uh, uh, once the shaking stops, they will help us evacuate uh, our students and employees and folks who are around to a pre-designated assembly point or uh, a safe a safe location. Um, God forbid if we have a, like a situation where we have to lock down the campus, uh, they will help us usher people in and uh, and, and so we can lock down um, you know buildings and and, and as such. Uh, and most of these emergency building coordinators, they, they uh, can communicate to us you know, via handheld radios. So whatever is affecting, whatever situation they're dealing with in the area, 
that they are assigned or the building that they are assigned, they will communicate to us uh, about difficulty they're going through or status update, which will give us the opportunity to uh, put uh, response actions in place. The third uh, layer we have is the president's cabinet team. So it's wanting to have an emergency response team of uh, managers who uh, play a key role in making decisions, um, responding to the situation itself. Uh, another thing to have emergency building coordinators, but there's certain decisions that has to be made you know, by uh, the president and his cabinet. Um, do we close campus? Or for how long do we close campus? What about you know, classes? You know, do we need to do pause classes you know, for, for a while? Um, disbursement of funds to be able to manage the situation you know, itself, uh, putting a public statement out and so on and so forth. So um, that's uh, the different groups we have. We have a fourth group though, which doesn't re necessarily relate, relate to the main campus here. If we have a major crisis with the students that's traveling, that's overseas uh, in another country, uh, 24 seven, we will um, activate that team and manage the situation. Now, we have a team in place. We also conduct you know, training, conduct training for all these groups. Uh, on August 12th, we'll have a intensive tabletop exercise. You now this year, we're gonna be focusing on uh, the first to 15 minutes of a major earthquake. After we're done with that, we're gonna move from 15 minutes you not know, to uh, hours. Okay, what about you no know, uh, uh, 24 hours? What about you no know, uh, 36 hours and so on and so forth? So, um, so we train and train and train. We also have resources to be able to manage situations that will occur, that may occur on campus. Uh, we have a a storage container inside our facilities yard that has uh, facilities related equipment such as heavy power tools, generators, uh, lighting equipment. Uh, we ha the health center have uh, a storage uh, container that has uh, some medical supplies. Uh, the third storage container has um, about say seven you know, day in you know, a food and water supply. Um, and it is uh, no ready to eat. Uh, I, I've tasted it, tastes good. It's not like the military type MREs. It's one of those tastes like biscuits you know, and so on and so forth. Um, so we have those. Uh, we also have uh, food in the cafeteria, which we're going to use to supplement uh, if there were to be uh, a situation that we need to handle. So those resources are there. We have the capability to communicate externally with, to the local sheriff department. You know, we have a memorandum of understanding with the local sheriff department in, in that regard. Um, we, uh, our personnel on campus, our officers, uh, for the most part, unless if they've not gone through the training yet, um, those who have gone through the training um, are armed. Um, we're armed. With, with firearms, not because our campus is not a safe place. Our campus ranks amongst, you know, the safest in the, in the entire region, in the city, which is, it's, the city is already, uh, you know, deemed safe. But uh, you know, having firearms is just in case, because in today's world, what's going on, what's happened at other colleges, you know, right? We want to be um, in a position of strength, to take care of uh, the students you know, whose safety are entrusted uh, in our care here. Um, and lastly, uh, we have an emergency notification system. We should look and send um, text message to students in the event that something's going on on campus to warn them about what's going on, where it's happening, and give them precise uh, steps to take to keep themselves safe. We realize that uh, the emergency notification system um, has some limitations. That means students may have their cell phones in their pockets uh, or in their backpacks, right? Uh, so we, um, over the last couple of years, we invested in an outdoor 
uh, public address system, or we have five of them on this campus that covers the entire campus that we will use to be able to communicate uh, messages messages to uh, students as well. Um, on the second part of the question regarding how students uh, parents will be notified, so if we have a situation occurring um, on campus, our primary focus will be you know, to make sure that our students and employees uh, and those who are on campus receive information that will enable them to take steps to keep themselves you know, safe. Uh, and, uh, and of course, provide updates on what we are doing to you know, keep them you know, safe as well. Um, parents come into play after we've already uh, taken steps to uh, support and care for our students. Uh, when I say parents come in play after that, we're not talking about days you know, here. Uh, it could be 30 minutes later, it could be uh, 45 minutes later, it could be 20 minutes. It depends on how quickly you know, we are able to manage the initial you know, situation. So the method that we use to communicate you know, to parents is through uh, you know, Kayla's team. Um, they, they will uh, send a message out you know, to you know, parents you know, to uh, provide information on what is taking place what steps now we're taking you know, to remedy what's taking place and what is to follow. Um, our emergency notification system, we advise parents you know, very strongly not to put your numbers into the system in place of their students. Uh, if that takes place, you know, then the student don't get the message and the parents don't you know, get the message, then that creates uh, you know, a problem you know, for us. So. Our Kayla's team will be um, the main medium that we'll use to uh, funnel information to parents. I just want to emphasize something that Chief O said earlier was us being rated one of the safest campuses. And I think especially um, right now, just in the, the climate of, of different colleges um, and the feeling of unsafety, it's, it's so important. And I hope it's reassuring to all those who are watching that your children are very much safe in this space. And, and that is an, a testament to Chief O and the work that he's done on his end with his team. Um, so rest assured of the, the prep, pre preparedness that our team has really, or our, our campus has really done in order to make sure that your children are safe and they feel safe, like he mentioned earlier. So thank you so much, Chifo. We'll transition back to our health center. Um, one of the questions that was submitted would, was, what are the most common cases that are seen in the health center? And then the treatment of those cases that you've seen. Wow, there are a variety of different things, but I, I guess Probably the, the main thing probably will be upper respiratory infections, whether they're viral or whether they're bacterial. So we would often treat just like it would with a cold, cough medicine, supportive measures. Um, if we if the provider deems that they might need an antibiotic, we will provide them antibiotics um, or a breathing treatment. We do have nebulizers here. So oftentimes if a student has asthma or wheezing, we will do a breathing treatment for them. Um, we also see things like a lot of um, ortho. So a lot of like meaning like you know, they were playing um, soccer and they twisted their ankle or maybe they hit their head when they were playing, um, you know, on their scooter and <laughs> those kinds of a lot of like ortho injuries. So we see quite a few of those and our doctor does manage quite a few concussion cases. Um, and then we do actually on, on, our, on our end too with the psych and mental health aspect of things, we do quite see and manage quite a few students who do have psychiatric and mental health needs. So that is a big part of our population as well. Um, not everyone gets medication. It just depends on the student. Um, and we work in very close collaboration with the BCC, our Biola Counseling Center. Um, and we work very closely with our interns as well who do come and do drop-in hours, meaning students can come in and drop in if they have any kind of questions about stress or anxiety or sleep. They just kind of do a drop-in to talk to one of our BCC interns. Um, and I could say probably a number of things are like things like rashes, um, maybe acne, those things come up quite a few times. And again, we treat accordingly with antibiotics if needed, or we watch and wait. Um, so yeah, there's a variety of different things. Um, but I think the majority is probably coughs and colds. Um, that's what brings students in a lot too, because they don't want to be sick while they're going to class. 
you mentioned the BCC, so our Biola Counseling Center. Yes. Um, I'd be curious to know maybe what you would might advise a student to come to your area versus maybe the Biola Counseling Center, or yeah. are those interchangeable? Yeah, so for psychiatric and mental health needs, um, if a student is interested in medication management, um, that's a, a perfect place to come here at the Student Health Center. Um, oftentimes, too, um, they will come here and see me or Dr. Chung, our psychiatrist, and say, maybe I'm not interested in medications quite yet, but I'm interested in therapy or getting some more resources um, connected to mental health. Then that's often then we'll I'll send them over to the Biola Counseling Center. Um, the Biola Counseling Center is um, located off campus, but they are very close by um, where students can walk or maybe just take a car ride over there. And uh, they actually provide um, sessions, weekly sessions that are $20 a session, which is actually very, very good. And so a lot of our students utilize those uh, those resources. And really, I think it has been very helpful for many students because um, a lot of times, too, what they do is they provide six to nine, 12 week sessions, too, that maybe they just need a quick little support to help manage stress or maybe a more situational anxiety thing that's coming up with a roommate or something like that. So, but we work very closely with them and we collaborate together with the BCC as well very frequently. And so there are great resources that we use. We mentioned this last uh, session, our last uh, webinar, that truly at Viola, there's holistic care in terms of caring for the students in their educational space and their spiritual health, but also in that that physical health and mental space as well. So um, looking at the whole person and, and offering resources on all of those spaces to care for them well. So I, I appreciate even just the mention of the BCC because that's, that has served so many students in kind of guiding them through, even if it's not serious anxiety or depression, but it's yeah. just needing a person to talk through things yeah, with. Uh, college is a transition and absolutely. there's a lot to navigate in that space. And so the BCC, we have, I'll even mention our spiritual direction and mm -hmm. the resources that are offered there. We have pastoral care. Mm -hmm. So these are all resources that are available to students as they navigate the changes of college and um, looking towards the future and finding their career. All of that comes with um, a lot of big decisions and mm -hmm. students often need just yeah. that soundboard um, and we yeah. provide that in a lot of different ways. So thank you for that, Sophia. Yeah. We'll transition yeah. over to Chief O again. Um, one of the questions was if a student has a late class across campus, um, what does it look like in them walking from that class to their dorm? Are there any resources to make sure that the student feels safe in walking across campus? Yeah, one of the things that uh, we've made sure um, is uh, late at night you know, to um, ensure that we have appropriate lighting, uh, li lighting at night. Uh, so the campus is well lit. Um, and if there's any issues you know, regarding that, you know, uh, we all, always work with our partners from facilities uh, management. Um, but uh, for students, is, um, you know, they finish their class late at night, say 10 o'clock, or maybe starting real, real late uh, in the library till like one o'clock in the morning or at the location on campus until two o'clock in the morning um, and need to go from one end to campus to the other, uh, it is safe. Um, if a student does not feel safe, you know, we have what we call uh, campus safety, you know, vehicle escort, um, where they can um, call us and we'll give them a ride, you know, from one location, you know, to the other. Um, during, um, I believe, you know, during student orientation week, um, I do have uh, about, say, 20, 30 minutes, you know, with uh, new students. Uh, we'll provide the numbers uh, to call in the event that you know, they need you know, that um, in the service. Um, we also have what we call Rave Guardian. Rave Guardian is, an, is a phone app whereby a student, it will enable a student you know, to uh, set up like a body system. Um, this pertains mostly to off campus, if, they, if they're going off campus, you know, right? Um, you know, for someone to know that they've arrived, you know, at the location that you know, they, had indicated that they're gone. Uh, if issues come up, um, mostly within the radios around here, they're able to communicate with us 
very silently, um, you know, without you know triggering whoever may be you know posing as a uh, safety risk, you know, to you know, to them. Um, if I can also mention, if a student you know um, is off campus and they're coming back to campus late at night, before they arrive on campus, if they feel like you know what. I don't feel safe. They can call us. We'll meet them at the parking lot and we'll give them a safety escort uh, to their residence halls. And if I can mention this you know, real quick, you know, Kayla, it's very important. You know, two things. One is you know, we're here 24 hours a day. Uh, we are the only department on this campus um, that uh, we never close our operations. Our operations you know, keep going. Um, and uh, we... Uh, for us, the honor, you know, to serve, you know, uh, you know, students in the body, um, and you know, also to um, add again that a campus is uh, considered one of the safest places in, in the city of La Mirada. But we do understand that off campus, uh, things can go wrong. Even on campus here, we're not immune from situations, but we've thought through different scenarios, you know, plans and how to support our students. So we will always be here 24 hours a day, you know, to support uh, your, your students. Thank you so much. Okay, the next question. Sophia, if you could speak specifically to insurance. Um, some of the questions that we received is, will my insurance work with the health center um, and then in the chat or in the Q&A, uh, there was someone that mentioned specifically, uh, let me see, Aetna, Aetna insurance. <laughs> so I don't know if you're able to speak to specific insurances or you can just kind of generally cover sure. yeah. insurance and how that interacts with the health sure. center. No problem. So um, this is something I love to just drill into my new incoming students is that the student health insurance and coming, oh, sorry, not student health insurance, Using um, the Student Health Center and getting seen by a doctor or a nurse practitioner is free for all enrolled students. So um, I have so many students that come like third, fourth week, and they're like, oh, it's free? And I'm like, yes, it's free to get seen. So I just want to make sure you let your students know that. Um, at the Student Health Center, we do not bill insurance. So we don't have a billing department for insurance, um, which means that we just see everybody who is an enrolled student. Now there will be costs when it comes to maybe if a student wants to purchase medications or maybe we do a lab work like getting a strep test, which is like $10, or maybe we needed to get blood work done and that could range, but it can range anywhere from 15, 20, $55 for some blood draw um, here at the Student Health Center. So costs um, will add up with like certain services, but the actual getting seen by a provider like our doctor or nurse practitioner is free. Um, what we do for insurance purposes, because I know that some people want to see if their insurance will cover or reimburse, we do provide the students something called a super bill. So the super bill will have the diagnosis codes, will have how much they paid for the actual services that were given, and then um, we'll you know, have the receipt. And then that can actually get sent to the insurance company. And the insurance company will um, typically reimburse because uh, we do everything mostly at cost here at the Student Health Center. So most people and most of my students, um, once they do the reimbursement with the Super Bill, they do have coverage. I, I don't want to say it's 100%, but most most of them do get good coverage. I will say this, that the, we are not a Medi-Cal provider. So that's one thing we don't um, provide services for Medi-Cal. So and we will still see a student with Medi-Cal, but we might say like, hey, you might need to go see your primary care doctor for blood work because we want to make sure that they get that cover through the insurance. And then Kaiser is another insurance that's a little bit more strict about what other pr providers provide. So usually with Kaiser students, we tend to just let them know, like, we, you may not get this reimbursed if you get the strep test done here. Um, but we are able to still provide um, prescriptions to pharmacies. So I have students who say, I don't want to purchase the medication here. I want it to go through my pharmacy. And that's completely fine too. So we do that where we send the prescription straight to the pharmacy and the student can show their insurance card to the CVS or to a Kaiser pharmacy or to Walgreens. And that can get kind of processed with insurance that way. Same with blood work. If the student says, I don't want to actually pay to get the blood work done here, but I want to go to Quest or LabCorp, we are more than happy to write that 
slip and give it to the student. The student will go to the actual lab center and get it done. Um, most students just like to do it here because it's convenient and they're on their way to class and they can just pop over and get their blood work done. Um, so that's why a lot of students opt to get it done here. But again, we don't um, bill any insurance and all enrolled students have complete free access to get seen by any of our providers um, at the student health center. In addition to that, it, it is a requirement to have health insurance. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a charge on your account for health insurance through Biola. If you have your own health insurance, it's important for you to go to the Gallagher website, which will be located in a link that we'll share with you today and waive it. And it will just require you to show proof of your, your own health insurance so that it will waive the fee that you're currently being charged on your bill. So that's something important to note as you're looking through your charges for Biola to see where that charge is coming from. It's because we automatically um, charge students for the health insurance here at Biola, but it can be waived. You won't have to pay that fee if you're wanting to use your own insurance. So you also wanted to insert that there as well. Um, in addition to the question, um, there was the question about are COVID shots provided oh, through mm -hmm. our health insurance? I, I would say any vaccine, what what is the Vaccines. opportunities available yeah. for that? Sure. So yeah, co we don't um, no longer provide COVID-19 vaccinations, um, but there's plenty of pharmacies in the area that will provide them. Um, we do have flu vaccines that we typically do a, like a flu, a big flu clinic around September, um, October-ish. But we'll usually when we get the new shipment of the flu vaccines for the year, we'll have them readily available for students. And then we do offer hepatitis B, tetanus shot, um, the uh, meningitis vaccine, and then the MMR vaccine. Um, and then we also do TB skin tests. So those are readily available at cost for at the Student Health Center. Thank you. Sure. Now, Chief O, some questions that we had sent in to us were about um, bike safety and what that looks like on our campus. Um, what are what are the safety measures for even um, owning a car and bringing a car to campus? One of the questions um, if we have safety guidelines or tips for students who bring a car and will be driving off campus. And I would say, especially for those students who aren't from the LA area and don't know the area as well as maybe a student that's from the local area, if there's any tips and guidelines for that as well. Uh, yes, uh, we, uh, we average uh, about uh, 600 bicycles on our campus uh, on an annual you know, basis. Um, and you know, bicycles on college campuses in general, it's an item that is frequently, you know, stolen, uh, mostly by outsiders, or you may have a student, you know, who just want to ride somebody else's bike from one location to the other. Um, so, um, you know, for us, we, um, we tend to focus on every little, little details. Still on a student bike may not be a big deal to the local police department or the local sheriff. It's a bike. For us, it's a big deal. Because if you don't take care of the little, little things, then what will happen is that um, things will get, you know, tend to get worse. So what we've done is on an annual basis, we will purchase uh, a U-lock, uh, not the chains. We advise students not to use the chains or uh, like a small a cable, you know, to lock their bikes to the bike rack, uh, to use a U-lock. Um, and I'll take it one step further. Uh, a couple of years ago, we bought about 10 different type of U-locks and we tried breaking into them ourselves. That's one particular one that we could not break into ourselves. That's the one that we buy. Uh, in bulk, and we give them to students free. Um, you know, um, the only requirement is that students use them to lock lock their bikes, secure their bikes, you not know, to the bike rack. Uh, since we've been doing that for the past three years now, the number of bicycles stolen on our campus has decreased significantly because, um, yes, our campus is not an open campus. Um, 70% of our campus is fenced, but there's still areas that folks can still walk through. But the main entrance, for uh, for example, is not fenced. We have a guardhouse there, 
Um, so our goal is to deter as much as possible. Um, they can go elsewhere, go to other colleges, you know, not Biola. Um, so we will uh, make those ULOCs available to students um, uh, this this August when, when they return to campus. Um, now, re in regards to vehicles, students know who are out of state and bring a, a vehicle on campus. Uh, vehicles are safe on our campus here. If you look at our annual security reports, we have very, very, very low, you know, a minimum to none in many years as far as stolen vehicles on, on our campus. Um, that's because we do have a gatehouse, guardhouse at both entrances you know, to our, you know, um, our campus. Students, you know, who have to drive off campus, we tell students, um, go east, okay? Go east of our campus. Um, west of our campus, I'll say maybe a good, you know, two, three miles you know, from here, we tend to tell students, you know, don't uh, go and hang out in those areas. Now, students they may need to travel to the city of Los Angeles, you know, other you know cities away from us that they have to drive through that location. That's perfectly safe, okay? But in terms of going to have a meal and hang out with friends, we say go east, you know, the city of La Habra, uh, city of Brea, right? Orange County, you know, essentially. So this is an item that you know, I intend to cover with our students when um, we spend some time with them during orientation. Thank you. Okay, Sophia, the question that we have for you now is about uh, monthly prescriptions that certain students might need to take um, and what the procedures are for those monthly prescriptions. If that goes through your office for long-term medication, what would you recommend um, when it comes to getting pres those prescriptions and um, the other additional and related? How do we know if you carry that medication on campus? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think the best course of action, usually for students who do have um, chronic illnesses or long-term needs, we actually have them um, make an appointment with one of our doctors, whether it's Dr. Naidu, our family practice, or Dr. Hawking. Um, and Dr. Hawking will kind of do a meet and greet, see what the needs are for the student, see how we can help support the student. Um, if it's something that we can continually have their provider maybe send over to to a, a local pharmacy, or if it's something that's an injection, um, there's so many different kind of factors included um, involved in this kind of uh, situation. So we usually take it case by case. Um, and we usually say like, yeah, please come when you come on campus um, first week and make that appointment and make contact with our doctor. And she's wonderful. Dr. Hawking's been here for 20 plus years. And she will kind of um, see what the needs are and see how we can support that student. Uh, with We have had some students um, get some monthly or buy every other month like injections. And that's happened before. We don't do immunologic or allergy shots here, but um, we've we've kind of, you know, took a case by case. So whoever um, asked this question, uh, I would just encourage you to just get connected with us as soon as you're on campus, and we will see how we can best support and help the student um, while they're here at Viola. Thank you. Hey, Chief O, the next question we have, um, sorry, let me pull it up real quick is so the question is what and how to use blue lights on the building if there is an emergency so i'm assuming um what you mentioned the blue lights earlier uh, maybe the process and how they're used on our campus yeah so uh we do have uh blue lights uh that uh, are located closer to buildings and some of them are in some parking lots you know as well um so it's a push of a button. Students don't have to dial a particular number. Once they push that button, uh, it will ring that very you know, second in our communication center, which is equivalent to a 911 you know, center. Uh, it will not go to a local police department um, or local sheriff department in our case you know, here. Uh, once we receive it, um, most of the locations where we have a blue light phones, we have cameras that can see them. 
Uh, so the, the communication center you know, personnel will, of course, the dispatch an officer and simultaneously put a camera so we can have eyes uh, on the location you know, itself. Um, for us, uh, any activation of uh, a blue light phone is a uh, so stage one emergency. That means what, you know, we have to get there like super, super fast. Um, now, what we're telling students, you know, based on different things that happened at different colleges. So I'm, I'm, I'm associated at the national level, you know, with campus you know, police chief. Came in, I came off a year of serving as the president of all campus police chiefs in the United States. So I have certain data and information that sometimes, you know, helps, you know, to look inward and add university to uh, kind of compare, you know, where we stand. So there's been a lot of universities whereby there's a blue light phone in an isolate, isolated location and the students, you know, push that button, waiting there, wait, waiting there, you know, for a response um, and then something happens. What we tell our students now with some of the blue light phones that we have at some of our packing structure, if you need any urgent response from us, or this is an emergency, or this is a safety issue, just continue to walk towards safety and use a cell phone instead. We give them a direct number, you know, which will do the same exact thing that when they call that number, um, it will ring just like a blue light phone will ring. It's the same line. It's better, you know, to go to safety or uh, go to an, a building nearby, go to go towards where there's people and call for help. Uh, unless there's a situation whereby, you know, students are unable to move. Say there's a medical situation, you know, right? They cannot move. That's different. But if someone is threatening a student's you know, safety and able to move, uh, that's part of what we uh, highly, you know, recommend. So yes, we, we, uh, we operate those. Um, we also, um, let our students know about our Rave Guardian, you know, system, you know, as well. When they text our communication center, um, the message will go as fast as, you know, if they push a blue light phone. If they call through using that system itself, the same exact line that it, it will go through. So we'll give students all these options uh, because we understand, you know, very intrinsically that not all shoe size, you know, fits all in terms of, you know, situation. So they can they can make the best, um, you know, decision um, based on, you know, what uh, they're dealing with at hand. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we have time for just a few more questions. So I will look at the ones that have been submitted in our chat box. One of the ones that we received, Sophia, was... Um, can I supply pill trace to my students for meds and vitamins? Is mailing to them okay? And is there any restriction on them self-administering these pills? Absolutely, you can. Yes, there is no restriction on students self-administering their own medications, their own vitamins. Yep. So if you wanted to provide whatever means they need to do that to remember to take the pills, um, that's totally fine. Um, so we have plenty of students on campus who I, I'm, I know that they take their own medication that never do get followed up with us. And that's totally OK, too. Um, so, yeah, that's totally fine. OK, Chief. Oh, um, we're going back to topic on bikes. Um, so if bringing a bike to campus, are there specific procedures like needing any kind of permit or things like that in order to have a bike on campus? Uh, yes, you know, so every student who bring a bike on campus will require um, for students to register the bike with us. Um, what that looks like is we will ask for a serial number. The serial number is usually underneath you know, the bike, underneath the pedal, uh, that frame there. We'll get you know, the serial number, put it in the system, we'll issue a bike permit. Uh, the permit is free. Uh, and the reason why we do that in the event that in the bike is stolen, um, the and the sheriff department recover the bike off campus. Uh, when they see a biology sticker, it helps you know, to for us to identify who the bike uh, you know belongs belongs to. Um, so uh, another you know 
um, requirement in terms of you know, procedures is to all students you know who bring bikes to campus, uh, their bikes must be locked to um, a bike rack. That's where the U lock you know comes into play in order to keep the bike rack you know um, location and area you know safe as well. Great. Now we didn't have any additional questions come through, so I'll give few more minutes to see if there are any other questions from those in the audience. But in the meantime, are there any last words, Chief O or Sophia, that you would like to share about your specific department or even just Biola in general and your time working here? Well, um, I'll say this, you know, I haven't been here for almost about 30 years now. Um, you know, Biola is a very unique place exceptional place um for me personally there's been opportunities you not know, to go and work for other universities uh but for me my faith in christ no matters no more to me and, and a place you know that uh you can uh not only you know, show your faith in christ but also continue to grow uh a place where um i can mingle with students um uh, at some point, your students will tell you uh, that Chief O sang, you know, Chief O danced. Uh, Chief O came to my residence hall in uh, during Halloween in a costume. Uh, so I do it all. I do all kinds of silly stuff, which for the most part, uh, my colleagues from across the country, um, they probably wouldn't do because they see it as maybe too low. For me, um, you know, um, put myself in parents' in the shoes um, uh, on what's expected. I uh, have a son who goes to school out in Oregon, George Fox University. Um, I look through that lens. And by the way, I wanted him to go here, but the reason why he's, he's, he can't go here is because he's a football player. Um, our daughter is getting ready next year, you know, to uh, go to college. Uh, she's a volleyball player. Uh, she's going to be going on scholarship, uh, University of Hawaii, um, which is okay with me. I go go visit, right? So uh, the reason why I bring up bring bring that up in terms of uh, a son and a daughter out of five children is because um, we. It is personal. It is personal. It is wanting to care for the safety and well-being of students, you know. But uh, it is personal when um, you have to, you know, look through that lens and think about, you know, a loved one. You know, uh, it could be a sister, a brother. Uh, in in my case here, uh, my children, and I want to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, whatever possible, you know, to keep our students uh, safe here on campus. So this is the kind of what part of what I wanted to add uh, on a personal level. Thank you so much, Chipo and Sophia. Do you have anything, any last parting words that you would like to share with our members today? Yeah, I mean, just to echo what Chief uh, O said that, you know, this is a very unique place and I feel very privileged and honored to be working here because, again, just like you mentioned, Kayla, we are all about the students um, and we're not just about here at the health center caring for the students' physical needs, but we are very much interested in wanting to care for the student in the totality of who they are. So um, body, mind and soul. So that is really important to us and that's kind of the, the foundation of where we you know, reach out to our students is, um, yes, you have a cold and a headache, but also, hey, how are you doing spiritually? Or do you need any other resources that we can connect you with? Um, and I think out of all the places I've worked, um, Viola, we've really worked really well in partnering with other departments. So um, Chief John's here and we we work very closely with campus safety and we are have a very good relationship and that I think collaboration and friendship and partnership just helps um, our reach for the students and for the camp for the campus in general too. And so um, I love working in partnership, not just with campus safety, but with all the different departments here. And we are all here for one main goal is to care um, and give excellent care for our students. So we're really excited to just welcome the, the incoming class. Thank you.
Thank you both. We are so grateful for all who attended here today. And just as a reminder, this is the third of four Ask Me Anything webinars that we are hosting throughout the summer. Our last one will be on July 24th, where we'll be joined from student development to go through some conversations that might be helpful to have with your student before they make their transition to college. So we hope that you all can join us and we will be sending you all a follow-up email with some of the questions that were asked here today, resources, and then offering a recap of um, all of the items that were presented by both of our speakers. But again, thank you so much for attending and we hope you have an incredible rest of your day. We look forward to welcoming you here in the fall. Bye.